Welcome to another Catch My Drift mini talk series. My name's Lauren Smith, and I'm a marine biologist who specializes in shark research. Today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about the local shark and skate species we have on display here in the aquarium. There are currently over 1,200 cartilaginous species that are known. So that includes the sharks, skates, rays, guitarfish, chimeras, and the sawfish. All of those have one thing in common, and that's the cartilaginous skeleton. So although they're very diverse across the different species, they all have this really bendy, flexible skeleton, which is completely different to the bony fish, like cod, haddock, and salmon. We have a number of different cartilaginous species in Scottish waters including the second largest shark on the planet, which is the basking shark. And if you're very lucky, in the summer months, you'll be able to spot this shark from the shoreline in the Murray Firth. Now this shark can actually reach up to a maximum length of around 10 meters. That's over 30 feet. So it's absolutely enormous. And as you can imagine, that would be a little bit impossible to keep within a small local aquarium like Macduff. So instead, we have a lot more suitable species that are a lot smaller and better suited to captive tank environments. This includes the small spotted cat shark, which confusingly is also known locally as the lesser spotted dogfish. We've got the bullhuss, which is another type of cat shark and we have the thornback skate. The small spotted cat shark is quite a small shark, generally less than a meter in length. It's a bottom dwelling species, so it pretty much just hangs about on the sediment where it feeds on things like squids, langoustine, small fish. And it's often encountered by divers or even snorkelers. And they're usually pretty chilled out. So if you come across these, they're pretty happy just to kind of sit there and you usually get to take a few photographs of them while you're there. The bullhuss is kind of like a larger cousin to the small spotted cat shark. This one reaches about 1.6 meters in length. It's also a benthic predator. So it spends a lot of its time sat on the bottom. And it also has a reasonably similar diet to the small spotted cat shark. So we're talking crustaceans like crabs and lobsters, squid, and small fish as well. Unfortunately, due to increased fishing pressures, numbers of bullhuss have declined substantially over recent years. The thornback skate can reach about one meter in length. Now, you'll notice that I'm actually calling it a skate, whereas quite often it is referred to as a ray. Only this is a little bit of a misnomer because it is actually a skate and we know that because all skates lay egg cases, whereas all rays give birth to live young. Thornback skate also are benthic predators and will quite often feed on small fish and also crustaceans, different crabs, langoustines as well. Now, it's the laying of these egg cases that all of these species have in common. The laying of egg cases is also known as reproductive oviparity. The egg cases are made of primarily a substance very similar to collagen. And it's a pretty tough material that creates a great environment for a developing embryo. So I've got some examples of the egg cases here. So this one is from the small spotted cat shark. We've got this one from the bullhuss. And this one is from the thornback skate. All of these three species do really well here at the aquarium. In fact, they do so well, they lay quite a lot of egg cases and the production is pretty prolific. Once they get to a certain stage, they're actually moved onto display in nursery tanks. And it's here that the public can see the developing embryos inside the egg cases. So the small spotted cat sharks and the bullhuss are usually supported vertically in the water column. And this pretty much mimics how they're laid in the wild, which is wrapped around kelp stipes. 
the thornbacks are a little bit more difficult to be able to keep an eye on their development. They're very dark egg cases, and in the wild, they would just be la laid on the bottom in the sediment, and that's exactly where they're placed in the nursery tanks as well. So they're just left on the bottom and allowed to develop there. These egg cases provide the perfect protected environment for these developing embryos. They have a yolk inside and they're attached by an umbilical cord. Over time, the little embryos develop and they slowly use up this yolk until they pretty much fill the entire egg case. At that point, they hatch out, usually from an opening at the top of the egg case. The time of development can vary quite a lot, even within the same species. So, for example, the small spotted cat shark in our waters can take about 10 months to develop, but same species in the Mediterranean can actually develop and hatch out within around six months. And that is just comes down to the water temperature. So the water temperature is much more warmer in the Mediterranean and allows the development of the embryo to happen on a much quicker time scale. Another interesting thing to note is that during development, a couple of splits develop on the top of the egg case. Now this allows seawater to come in and basically flush out any waste materials that could be building up inside the actual egg case. These splits and the exchange of seawater also potentially allows the embryo to start developing its immune system. And this is a little bit of conjecture on my part, but I believe that if pathogens are potentially coming in through the seawater, it will allow that little embryo to start actually building up its immune system. Once the pups or neonates have actually developed completely and hatched out of the egg cases, it's quite common to actually find these egg cases washed up on the shore. Sometimes it takes a big sort of storm event to be able to wash these egg cases off of the kelp stipes and up from the sediment up onto the strand line. So if you're out and about on the beach, it is worth keeping an eye out on the strand line to see if you can find any of these egg cases. They are pretty well camouflaged, especially when there's things like dried out seaweed around and bits of kelp. So you do have to really look carefully, but it is possible to find them. If you want some help being able to identify these egg cases, then the Shark Trust do an excellent ID guide. See what I did there? And this can really help you see which species you're actually finding on your local beach. Once you have identified your egg cases, then you can upload your results online at the Shark Trust website. Any information gathered about what egg cases are washing up where gives a really good indicator as to the type of species that we have just off our coastline. And there we have it. That was just some about the amazing shark and skate species that we have in our waters around Scotland, and also what is on display here at Macduff Marine Aquarium. I really hope you enjoyed this talk. Thank you so much for listening.